Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. It is January 4th, 2016, and here's a look at our top stories. Tonight, CNN will provide Obama with an hour of TV time and a live audience to make his executive orders look like democracy and not tyranny. Just ignore the Constitution. Well, pretty soon you won't be able to get guns. I mean, it's another step in the way of not getting guns. But don't worry. If someone's slinging lead, you can always throw canned food. That's the idiotic tactic given to middle schoolers with the acronym ALICE. Alert, lock down, inform, counter, and evacuate. They forgot die because no one has any weapons to defend the children. And InfoWars reporters are live on the scene of the Oregon occupation. We are on the ground in Oregon outside of the Mount here Wildlife Refuge. All that and more on tonight's InfoWars Nightly News. drinking water. You can't survive without it. But where do you get it? Alexa Pure Pro is a brand new groundbreaking gravity-fed water filtration system that is like no other. The Alexa Pure Pro transforms water from virtually any fresh source into clean, healthy drinking water, pairing the unprecedented super filtration power of an all-new gravity block core with a hybrid chromatic shell. It removes up to 99.999% of impurities, including bacteria, viruses, fluoride, disinfectants, volatile organic contaminants and hormones filter capacity up to 5,000 gallons stainless steel construction easy assembly low maintenance replacement filters are simple to install and now as part of an exclusive limited time introductory offer you can save $20 off the retail price and get free shipping this is a limited time offer so order your unit today and receive free shipping and $20 off go to infowarsstore.com or call 888-253-3139 now, coming up later in our show, we have special reports from both Alex Jones and Joe Biggs, who's on the ground in Oregon. So we'll let them tell you all about the situation. But in the meantime, Kurt Nimmo has a great article out. Hammond's targeted because government wants to steal their land. And you can read up more about the Oregon situation. And just briefly, I'll touch on it. Uh, as far as the Hammond situation, it's a little different from the Bundy situation. Because my understanding of what's going on in Oregon is that the Hammonds have not asked for any type of outside assistance, especially not from any type of armed groups, whether they be open carriers, militias, or whatever else. And also on this whole thing that uh, the guys are storming the, uh, the the center up there and holding people hostage, it's, it's a bunch of bull. They're in an unoccupied building out in the middle of nowhere, which you'll see in Joe Biggs' report. But as far as the Hammond situation, they're not asking for anybody's assistance in this. So uh, when you have a bunch of people who are out there demonstrating with armed with their arms, which, you know, I support the First Amendment, I support the Second Amendment and all that good stuff, but I don't think it's really helping when you're, when you're trying to force ass assistance on a group that's not requesting it, so that's just my two cents about that. And with this, it, the qu people starting to ask the question, is Obama going to use a situation going on in Oregon to push his gun control agenda? And I do believe that he is going to do just that. And now we see CNN to provide an hour of airtime to Obama's gun control pitch. The announcement was made Sunday, with CNN stating that Obama will attempt to make gun control part of his legacy. Anderson Cooper will host the 8 p.m. special, which detractors will label a propaganda effort, in the wake of reports that Obama is set to announce executive action on gun control legislation within a week. CNN makes it clear that it is providing airtime for Obama to make one final pitch on the issue. Now, once again, I'm sure we can all agree there is a good amount of gun violence in this country, but you also have to realize, you can check the FBI's own numbers, street crime is down from the 1980s. You're safer now in 2016 than you were back in 1986 when I was born. So take that into account as well. And also, as we always point out, you have people, be it Obama, Eric Holder, Dianne Feinstein, any number of people, and mainly it's, it's not really an issue of Feinstein or Holder, but when you have the Obama administration who's pushing so hard for gun control here domestically, meanwhile, they're arming uh, Al-Qaeda, they're arming Mexican drug cartels, and they want to lecture you and tell you that you need to give up your gun rights. It's a complete crock of bull, especially when you consider these guys themselves. They have armed security. They go to buildings full of armed security. Uh, they're, they're in the White House. They're in the State House. They're in all these places where they have protection for themselves. 
Meanwhile, they say that it's uh, unreasonable, it's, it's not common sense for you to have more than five rounds in your mag magazine. They're saying it's not common sense for you to be able to go out and buy an AR-15, which is just a complete crock of bull, which we will demonstrate to you in just a few moments when we talk about some of the top stories, uh, gun stories of 2015. But now let's talk about Donald Trump. He's saying pretty soon you won't be able to get any guns. And this is in reaction to some of the statements made by Obama. Republican presidential frontrunner Donald Trump on Monday slammed President Obama's plan for executive action on gun control, saying that pretty soon people won't be able to get guns. And I do agree with this. Um, you know, so I don't agree with everything Donald Trump has to say, especially on the gun issue, because one glaring thing that I don't think enough people are talking about when concerns Trump is his support of the no fly, no gun buy list, which we have extensively documented is a really bad system. As well-intentioned as it may be, when you bar an eight-year-old Boy Scout from flying on an airplane because he has a name similar to that of a suspected terrorist, that means your system has a lot of flaws in it. So I'm not all the way on the Trump campaign. But as far as this, yeah, uh, Obama is pressing very hard to get these gun control agendas passed through, even though we've shown uh, numerous signs. I've just told, told you about it just a second ago. The fallacies within his own administration and all the things that are going on with that. Meanwhile, he wants to take your firearms away. And we always hear the things from Obama. He gets up on TV and he says, uh, nine out of 10 Americans want these measures that I'm proposing and reasonable this and uh, control that. And I'm like, well, who are these people that these guys are talking to? Because nobody's asking me if I want to ban firearms, if I want universal background checks. Meanwhile, he quotes these numbers all the time. Nobody asked the uh, Texas governor who said, come and take it. I don't think they included him in the polls or the Texans who are now open carrying because the law just took effect here in the state in the state of Texas. I don't think anybody asked them either. So all these numbers are very uh, cookbooks numbers, in my opinion. And it's not just my opinion. Now we have the facts right here. Background checks for gun sales at record high in 2015. And it says the agency on Monday reported that they had performed 23,141,970 checks in the year of 2015. That's a whole lot of background checks, especially for all these people who say these uh, gun show loopholes and all this, and they think that everybody's out there having never gone through a background check. Once again, in the year 2015, you had 23,141,970 background checks performed, and then that doesn't mean that everybody who got the check got the gun. That's just the people who went through the process. So next time it's your friend tells you that, oh, everybody's running around, they haven't done all these background checks. 23,141,970 people had a background check here in the United States of America to purchase firearms. So there you go, people who say there are no such thing as background checks. Now, let's talk about why you need a firearm in the first place, because as well-intentioned as the police may be, they can't be there to protect you all the time. So now we see uh, the 10 most talked about defense gun uses of uh, 2015. This is from guns.com, an excellent site. And one in particular I want to have your attention to, and we're not going to talk about all of them for the sake of time, but if you look down at number nine, if you guys got the video, we can go ahead and roll that. This is a store owner who fended off a group of armed robbers. Now you can see he pulls out his AR-15, and show all this, show this to your friend who say, why do you need an AR-15? Why do you need more than five rounds in your magazine? Well, as you can see, he opens fire with his AR-15, and it's not like a James Bond movie where he shoots the guy, you know, 300 yards away, he falls down and causes an explosion. No, he, he opens up a few rounds, and the guys still live to talk about. So you need to have something that with a little bit of range to reach out there and touch somebody. Now, I'm not a big fan of shooting rifles indoors, but, you know, this is the situation. Uh, rifles probably a lot easier to conceal than a full-length shotgun, so I'm not going to knock the guy for that. And also, he did hit one of the guys, so you can say that as well. And then, you know, people would say, you don't need that type of firearm. You know, a lot of people just said, sit there and wait for the police to come and save you. As you can see, these guys definitely meant serious business. They are willing to uh, ram their car into the front door of his business. He needed a means to protect himself quite immediately. He couldn't wait two minutes for a, res a response time. And also, we see more and more sheriffs getting into the mindset, saying that if you break into homes or businesses in my county that you're going to get shot. And these are the words of a Polk County Sheriff. And now with more on this, we go to Leanne McAdoo, who has a special report, a woman on the street talking about gun rights in America and also open carry here in the state of Texas. 
Leanne McAdoo for InfoWars.com. I'm here in Austin, Texas. Now we are four days into the official passing of Open Carry. Wanted to see what people's opinion are of, of now they're going to be actually able to view people's guns uh, in their holster. Are they afraid of that? Are they okay with that? And we also wanted to get people's take on what's happening in Oregon. Do they think this is a good move or is this going to um, bolster Obama's push for gun control? Well, we just um, passed Open Carry here January 1st. Oh, great. So people. I'm all for it. Yeah. I'm all against it. Really? Yes. yes. And we're still married. <laughs> I am. I, I am for gun regulations, mm -hmm. and uh, open carry is weird. I'm not going to go to any business where I see people waltzing in there with their guns. It's just. Uh, it just turns me off. What do you guys think about the open carry that just passed here in Austin? We're not from here. Sorry. Do, does that frighten you to think that people will have guns on their holster, or is, are you okay with it? I'm okay with it. As long as they're responsible, I'm fine with it. Would you be frightened to see people with their guns on their holster? I don't think so, because it, it is Texas. Uh, it, probably in some, some places I would, and probably in some places I wouldn't. So it just depends on the setting? Yeah, yeah. I think if you're responsible, it can be done well. But if you're not, and people aren't paying attention, bad things happen. I'm a fan. Right. <laughs> uh, What's your opinion on it? Um, that, well, I don't think everyone should just be walking around with them, but mainly when it's really hot and you want to carry and it's too hard to wear eight pounds of clothes when it's 100 degrees out, then it's nice to be able to. Well, I'm all for Second Amendment. I think people should have the right to do what they wish to do. Uh, however, like my wife said, I think that you're, it's better to have it concealed than to be shown. But if somebody wants to have it shown, that's up to them. But if you're allowed to have a gun, it's kind of odd to not be allowed to carry it. Um, that's how I feel about it. It lets you know who has the weapon. There's people walking around with them concealed anyways. I think that's scarier. Would you continue to go to a business that allowed people to bring in their guns? Yeah, I think, I mean, I think I would. I, I wouldn't, like, boycott them. If I, if I was in a circumstance where I felt uncomfortable or something, I might leave, but I wouldn't make a big point out of it. She said she wants more regulations. Well, people that are law-abiding citizens are now having more regulations placed upon them, and criminals will, in fact, skirt the law anyway. So to me, it's ridiculous. Uh, are you aware of what's going on in Oregon right now? Yeah, I, I am a little, I'm aware, but I haven't like read a lot of details about it. The president is about to come out on Thursday calling for more, um, you know, gun control regulations. Do you think something like that is going to cause the country to be in support of more gun control? Or, or do you think that they're going to be proud of Americans standing up? I think whoever is already against and for gun control is just going to sway them more either way. I don't think it's going to change anyone's mind. I don't think it's going to be bringing people together. Uh, the people on people are going to interpret it how they see it. They're going to either be on the side that thinks, "Oh man, this is what needs to be done. Uh, give them an inch, they take a mile," and the other side is, "Oh, this is so typical." There's a lot of people that feel like the the federal government overreaches what what it's there for. Um, that's what they feel like up there, obviously. Um, in a lot of cases, that's what I feel like. Um, I haven't had a situation where I felt compelled to gather some fellow citizens and take over a building. Um, I'm also not a rancher that lost their livelihood because the federal government decided they were going to take some land or stop letting someone use my land or stop letting me use land. Um, so I mean, I definitely I get where they're coming from, but I'm going to have to read about it more for sure to, yeah. to decide whether I think they're going totally overboard or maybe they're just having the guts to do something that somebody's got to do. I think things should be done legally. All right. And do I actually think that it's going to hinder it? No, I think Obama's going to do what Obama wants to do. He's in his lame duck term as president and he's just going to try to flex whatever muscle he thinks he can do and try to get away with it. He's going to do the right thing. And while we're talking about all the things that law and law enforcement has done to promote the agenda of safety here in the United States of America, some police departments and agencies aren't exactly going on the same, on the same uh, flight path, so to speak. And now we see that the Chicago 